Okay, let's continue on with our uh, factoring lessons. We have looked at so far doing some simple common factoring, which is very important and always look to common factor before you do any other type of factoring because sometimes common factoring can make your factoring a lot easier. So always look for common factoring. We also looked at factoring complex trinomials as well, uh, as well as simple trinomials. And, and today I want to focus on difference of squares. Okay. Now before we begin and looking at factoring difference of squares, I want us to consider the following expansion. So if I have two factors here, an x plus 3 factor times an x minus 3, okay, I just want to expand this out. So I want to do first times the first, first times the second, second times the first, second times the second. I want us to look at what this ends up looking like when we have two separate factors that look identical besides the fact that one is being added and the other is being subtracted. What ends up happening is you end up having this situation here where you have minus 3x plus 3x, which simply they end up canceling each other out. You end up with 0x. So you end up with the following equation in standard form or expression in standard form. Okay, so if in the beginning we were in factored form, Okay, you can see the two different factors there. And by expanding it out, we moved into standard form. And you can see that there's only two terms in the standard form. Okay, um, there's not three terms with what, you know, with what we're familiar with when we're factoring quadratics. Let's look again at the following. You can see it's going to happen again. So we'll end up with x squared minus 4x plus 4x and then minus 16. Clean that up, and you end up with x squared minus 16. So you could see, again, two terms. And if you noticed, both situations had minus signs separating them. Okay? Um, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. So if we were to write a general statement, if we have x squared minus a, another number squared, okay? It can be written in the following form, where you take whatever your x value was, minus it by your y, times your x value plus your y. Because I want us to start looking at some connections here. So you can see that here we have a four, and we end up with 16 here, okay? Here we have a three and we end up with nine here. There's a pattern, okay? So depending on what those numbers are, it appears to be that they just simply get squared, okay? So three squared is nine. Or going back this way, they were square rooted, right? The square root of nine equals three. Same with this here, this 16. If we were to square root 16, we'd end up with a 4, which gives us those values in there. And so we can say the same about this general statement, that if, if we're given this format here, okay, so let's say this is in the format of x squared minus y squared, all we need to do is square root each, okay, so square root each, meaning Take the square root of x squared, take the square root of y squared. The square root of x squared, by the way, is just x. So that becomes your first term in each of your factors here and here. So square rooting x. Square rooting y becomes your other value that is in your factors. Okay, And you simply write one of your factors with a minus sign and the other with a plus sign. Okay, so that's just really quick um, some of the patterns that go into these, these special cases where each factor is being uh, added and subtracted by the same number. Okay, we end up with this special case called a difference of squares. So in general, a difference of squares expression always has exactly okay, two terms. 
in standard form. So in standard form, it has two terms, just like I showed you here. It, it will always end up having two terms. Okay, each of the terms is a what's called a perfect square, meaning we can square root each of the two terms. So I'll put in brackets, can square root each term. So again, if we go back to the example of x squared minus 16, you can square root x squared, that equals x, and you can square root 16, of course, and that equals 4. So in order for it to be a difference of squares, there has to be two terms, and each term you have to be able to take the square root of. By the way, the square root of x to the 4, how do you find that? So suppose we have x to the 4. Can you take the square root of x to the 4? You can. Because remember our uh, radical laws, okay, that the square root really just means the same thing as to the power of a half. And when you have a power to a power, you multiply. 4 times 1 half, right, which becomes 4 over 2, which becomes x squared. So the square root of x to the 4 is x squared. And I mean the same applied up here in this example, okay? Um, we have x squared, and if we change the root bracket to be to the power of 1 half, we'd end up with 2 times a half, which is 1. And that's why the square root of x squared is just x to the 1. Okay? So you can take the square root of x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, and so on and so on, all, the, all your even exponents. Now, for it to, going back, for it to also be a difference of squares, they, the terms have to be separated. Look at these two examples on your right up here. Okay, they have to be separated by a minus sign. Okay, so in knowing that, let's take a look at this example 4x squared minus 9, and let's find out if this is a difference of squares or not. Let's do the check of the three items that we have above. Okay, so can you take the square root of both terms? Okay, so can we take the square root of 4x squared, and can you take the square root of 9? You can. Okay. So they're definitely, uh, we're definitely able to square root them. Now, are they separated by a minus sign? Yes. Okay. So absolutely so far, this is a difference of squares. And how many terms are there? I should probably add that in our check. Two terms. So there has to be two terms separated by a minus sign, and you have to be able to square root each of the terms evenly. So let's find the square root of each term. The square root of 4x squared is what? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is just an x. Okay, and if you're wondering how I did that, okay, again, go back to your radicals and exponent laws, and I'll just do it down here, that the square root of 4x squared is the same or equivalent to 4 times x squared all to the power of 1 half. And if we remember our exponent laws, okay, then you would distribute 2 times a half and then also distribute the 1 half to, have, uh, to be raised um, above the 4 as well. So 4 to the power of a half is just the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so that's where I got that from. And you know, you just think of it as separate, right? So you're taking the square root of 4, and then you're taking the square root of x squared, okay? And I mean, they're being multiplied together, so keep them, keep them multiplied together for 2x. Then we have the square root of 9, of course, is just 3. All right, so what you do now is you take these two numbers, or these two terms, okay? And you set up two different brackets to put it in factored form. 
So this is now going to be in factored form. And you're going to take the first term here and place it in the first position in your brackets. Okay, then take a plus on one bracket and a minus in the other, and then place your second term in the second slot. Okay, how do you know you did this correctly? There's your factored form, so we should write here, factored form. And how do you know you did this correctly? Well, I'm gonna show you, if we expand this back out, we should get back to the original standard form equation. So let's expand it back out. Okay, so 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Then 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Then positive 3 times 2x is positive 6x. And positive 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Now you can see what's going to happen to these two middle terms. They're going to... Um, equals zero, so you don't need to, of course, show that zero, and you end up with 4x squared minus nine, which, of course, is our original equation. Okay, that's how you know you did this correctly. So let's go through now some examples. Okay, starting with the easiest example. Okay, so do your check. Is it a difference of squares? Are there two terms? Yes. Are they separated by a minus sign? Yes. Can you square root both terms evenly? Yes. So this is in fact a difference of squares. Okay, it satisfies those three uh, items. Now let's take the square root of x squared, which is x. Let's take the square root of 16, which is four. Set up your two brackets. Okay, one with a plus, one with a minus, and place your x in the first position in each factor there, and your four in the second position in each factor. And there you have it, the factored version. Okay, again, let's do our check for the next question here. Are there two terms? Yes. Okay, are they separated by a minus sign? Yes. And can you square root 9x squared as well as 49y squared evenly? You can. So this is a difference of squares. So let's start by square rooting 9x squared. You end up getting 3x. Let's square root 49y squared. You end up with 7y. Set up your two brackets. One with a plus, one with a minus. By the way, it doesn't matter which you put first, the bracket with a minus or with a plus, it doesn't matter. Place your first term in the first position here, and then your second term in the second position. And again, if we were to expand this out, we would end up getting the original uh, standard form equation. Okay, so let's move on to one, a couple that are a little bit more challenging. And, and this one in particular is a little bit more challenging because what you always have to remember when you're factoring, okay, is look to see if you can common factor first. It can make your life a lot easier, right? Because you would look at this and you would say, oh, this is not a difference of squares, right? You can see that, oh, well, there's two terms separated by a minus sign, but can you take the square root of eight and the square root of 50 evenly? No. So you'd be stuck here if you didn't realize that, hey, I can common factor this first and see what I'm left with to see if I do indeed have a difference of squares. Okay, so what number goes into, or what number can we pull out of the eight as well as the 50? Okay, what number can we pull out? So, I mean, let's start with the biggest possible one. Can we, can we pull out an eight? No. Okay, 8 goes into 8, but 8 doesn't go into 50 evenly. Can we pull out a 6? No. Can we pull out a 4? Well, we can pull out a 4 out of 8, but can we pull out a 4 out of 50? No, we can't. So it looks like we're down to our 2. And yes, we can uh, pull out a 2 out of our 8 as well as our 50. 
So what I'm going to do is write two, then open my bracket, and I'm going to divide each term by two, and whatever's left over, I put in my bracket. So 8x squared divided by two is 4x squared minus 50y squared divided by two is 25y squared. Now you can see that what we have left over is we actually do have a difference of squares after we common factored out a 2, right? Because I can square root 4 and 25. So what you do now is let's take the square root of 4x squared. And by the way, you don't have to write this. Once you get good at this, you'll be able to do this in your head. 25y squared is 5y. So here's what you do. Don't forget now, it's easy to forget that this 2 is still here. So drop this 2 down, open, now open your two sets of brackets. Okay, drop that 2 down though, because that 2 just doesn't disappear. Put a plus and a minus in each bracket. Write your first term in the first position there, and then 5y in the second position. And you have properly factored that difference of squares. Okay, last question, which is, you know, it, it's the most difficult, but it's still not overly difficult, okay? Because I already told you that you can take the square root of x to the four. So let's see what happens. Do we have a difference of squares? Let's do our check. Two terms, yes. Separated by a minus sign, yes. Can we square root each? Yes, we can. So let's square root x to the 4, which is x squared. And let's square root 81, which is 9. Open up your two brackets. Plus and a minus. x squared plus 9. x squared minus 9. Okay, so... A lot of us will think that this is now done and we're finished. However, hopefully you can see that there is one more uh, factoring set that we can do here. Okay. Hopefully you can see that this here can still be factored. Why? Well, because there's two terms separated by a minus sign and we can square root each of those. Look at this factor here, x squared plus 9. Is that a difference of squares? It's not. Okay, the thing that makes it not a difference of squares is the fact that there's a plus sign and not a minus sign. So it, it's not. So that's going to stay the same. Okay, but now we're going to factor the second factor there, x squared minus 9. So we're going to square root x. We're going to have two brackets, one with a plus, one with a minus. We're going to square root x squared, and that's x, and we're going to square root 9, which is 3. So this is why this question, you know, could be considered maybe one of the harder ones, because you have to recognize that there's still a difference of squares left over. And that will usually be the case when you have an x to the 4. Okay, so that should be the case when you have an x to the power of 4 there that you'll end up with three different factors or brackets there, okay? Um, so this is, again, another uh, type of factoring that really just needs practice. It's not difficult. You just got to get the hang of it. So practice it in our homework questions, and it should be something that you feel comfortable with.